Rust traits. They are awesome and they give you superpowers in Rust. And here's why. Alright, if you're new to Rust and Rust traits as well, and if you're coming from other languages such as C++ or Java, right, you can think of Rust traits as similar to interfaces in those languages with some differences which we'll touch on later in this video. Right? But to help you understand Rust traits better, okay, we're going to use this illustration as a visual guide. All right? So for example, here we have a dog and a cat. Right, just ignore uh, how well it's drawn. Yeah, okay. So we have a dog and a cat, and say, hey, we want to give them the characteristic to create sound. Right, in this case, that would be the sound trait. Yeah, so in this case, you can think of giving the dog and the cat a characteristic or a trait. In this case, the sound trait. Okay, but when you give the sound trait to a dog and a cat, yeah, it will give them the ability to make some noise. So for example, okay, once the dog has the sound trait, it could make some noise. Okay, maybe let's create a square here, yeah. And this will be make some noise. For example, right? Okay, in the case of the dog, if you ask a dog to make some noise, yeah, the dog would, what would a dog do, right? A dog would bark, yeah? Whereas if you give the sound trait to a cat and you ask the cat to do the same thing, to make some noise, yeah, so we're gonna copy this block over here, yeah. Instead of barking, the cat would meow, yeah. All right, so this is a visual example of how in Rust you can use traits. For example, in this case, the sound trait to give different structs. In our case, the dog and the cat struck, right? Different behavior, even with the same, for example, functions here, yeah, even with the same trait, okay as a dog would bark and a cat would meow, yeah? All right, so let's take a look at how that looks like in code. All right, so let's go back to Helix over here. Okay, so first out we have our dog struct. Okay, nothing too complex with a simple name, right? And a simple new function to construct and return it. All right, same for our cat. So nothing too complex, quite straightforward. So we have our dog and cat structs. Okay, and over here, this is how you would define a trait. Yeah. Okay, and we also have a function for the make some noise function here. Okay. So as we scroll down, you'll see that. Okay, all the way to the left. Okay, so this is how you implement the sound trait for our dog struct. Yeah, so over here, we'll say, Okay, we will define the make some noise function here. Okay, but okay, we will print out woof woof. Okay, because the dog is barking. And whereas for the cat, okay, the same trait, the same function name. Okay, but we can specify a different print line. Yeah, so it is printing out meow meow for cat. Okay, and in our main function. Okay. We have created a dog and a cat. Okay, and we are calling the same function, make some noise on both the dog and the cat. Yeah. All right, so now if we go to our terminal, all right, watch what happens when we do a cargo run. All right, you see that, okay, woof woof and meow meow is printed out. All right, even though we are calling the same function, make some noise provided by the sound trait. Yeah, so this is the first example, a very simple one to show you how you can leverage on traits to give different behaviors to different structs, for example, all right? 
All right. Another way you can leverage on Rust traits is with functions. Yeah. So in this example, we're going to take a look at how you can use Rust traits with functions so that you can enforce the parameters or maybe some parameters to your functions that only accept structs that implement specific traits. Yeah. So let's take a look at our example here. So very simple. We have a struct called animal with a name. Okay, and the implementation for our animal struct with a new function, nothing too complex. Okay, we also have another struct called animal with no trait. Yeah, so for this struct, okay, we will not implement any traits for it. Yeah, okay, same thing here, the new function for it. Okay, so as we move down, okay, we will have the, once again, the sound trait and the make some noise function. Okay, so we will only implement this sound trait for our animal struct this round. Okay, so and in our make some noise function, okay, we will just print out animal making some noise. Yeah, okay, okay, but now okay, we have a new function here and it's called do something with struct with trait. All right, okay, so here we can enforce the parameter here called animal. Okay, to only accept a struct, yeah, that implements the sound trait, yeah, using the implement keyword here, all right, and the name of the trait. In this case, there will be sound, all right, and we'll just make the animal make some noise, yeah. Okay, and finally, in our main function, okay, for starters, okay, we'll create an animal with no trait and we'll try to pass this animal with no trait to our do something with struct with trait function all right so let me save this and watch what happens when we save it all right notice that rust is complaining all right let's take a look all right you can see that rust says that hey sound is not satisfied yeah, because our animal with no trait does not implement the trait sound. Yeah. Okay, as you can see when we are here, when our cursor is here, yeah, the function signature tells us that this is required by a bound in the function do something with struct with trait. Yeah. So this way of writing this, right, is basically a shorter way of writing a trait bound. Yeah. So to resolve this, all we have to do is, okay, we're going to comment this out. Yeah. All we have to do is create an animal, okay, with trait. So basically the normal animal, yeah. Okay, uh, let me give me a simple name. Let's maybe Tommy, for, ex for example, right? And we'll just call the function, do something with strong with trait, and we pass in animal, right? Save. And the error goes away. Yeah. And that's because we are passing in the animal that has implemented the sound trait. Yeah. Over here. All right. And of course, if we go to our terminal. All right. And we do a cargo run. Yeah. You'll see the output above my head. Animal making some noise. Yeah. So that's another way how you can leverage on traits in Rust to only accept right, certain structs or structs that implement certain specific traits that you want. Yeah. All right. Now here is a fun way to leverage on traits in Rust. Yeah. So with traits in Rust, you can conditionally implement functions depending on whether a type has implemented the trait that you want yeah so let's see in action here with our example in our helix so first up as usual we have our sound trait okay with a simple function called make some noise yeah it's the same okay and secondly we have a action okay we have an action trait here okay that have a that has a simple function called do some action all right okay next we have our animal struct here okay but you'll notice something different 
Okay, this syntax, okay, with a T in it, okay, basically allows us to pass in a generic type to, in this case, animal, yeah. Okay, and we'll get to that reason why we are doing this. Yeah, so you are able to pass in any generic type. Okay, it could be another struct, for example, yeah. Okay, and as we implement the animal here, okay, with a simple new function to construct it, yeah. Okay, so the key is when we move down to this portion here, right? Here you'll see here the signature of this implementation, right? Basically what this does is for any type, right, in the animal, okay, that implements the trait sound, okay, implement the make loud noise function for that type, yeah? Hey, and of course, we're just printing out animal is making a loud noise in this function, right? Nothing too complex. Okay, but okay, this next block is even more interesting. Okay, what this block is doing is it will check to see if for the type, the generic type that we have passed into our animal struct implements both the sound and action traits. Okay, so that is the condition. Okay, if that condition is met, okay, we will implement the dash loudly function yeah, for that type. Yeah, in this case, we're using another struct, okay, which you can see below here. Okay, we're using a very simple cat struct here, all right, with a simple name once again. Okay, and we have our cat implementation here, yeah, with a new function to construct it. All right. And we also, okay, we are implementing the sound trait for our cat. Uh, hence, we have the make some noise function here where we are printing out cat meowing. Yeah. Okay, and we are also implementing the action trait for our cat. Hence, we have our do some action function here as seen above here. Yeah, do some action. All right. Yeah, and of course, we're just printing out cat is moving, right? Nothing too complicated. Yeah. Okay, so going to our main function. Okay, we're creating a new cat, giving it a name called kitty. Okay, we're calling the make some noise and do some action functions provided by the sound and action trait, uh, respectively. Right, so this is from the sound trait. And this is from the action trait. All right. Nothing too complicated over here. Okay. As shown from our previous two examples. Okay. So what is fun okay, is this portion here. All right. So here we are creating a new animal and we are passing in our cat. Okay. Which is an animal as well. Okay. Because our definition of our animal struct takes in a generic type. So we can pass in our new cat, okay, as our first parameter, yeah, and of course with our animal, and because our cat implements both the sound and the action trait, okay, we can call both the make loud noise function and the dash loudly function, and if we go to terminal, okay, and do a cargo run. So I'm just pressing enter so that you can see the output. Yeah, so after doing a cargo run, okay, we can see the output right above my head, right? It says cat meowing, cat is moving. So that those two outputs are from the two functions provided by our sound and action trait. Okay, and you see the two lines, the next two lines, animal is making a loud noise and animal is running around loudly. So those are outputs from the make loud noise function and the dash loudly function, right? So if we go back to Helix here, so those two functions are over here, right? So those are implemented because our cat struct, right, has fulfilled the requirements or the conditions here because it has implemented both the sound and the action traits, yeah? So watch what happens if we remove the implementation of the action trait for our cat. So for example, this block over here, 
which is the implementation for the action trade file cat. If we comment it out, watch what happens. Yeah. So notice that the Rust compiler is complaining because okay, obviously, okay, this is because okay, we are not using the action tree anymore. Alright. And okay, now it is complaining, hey, the dash loudly method, right? It is for animal cat, but it's trait bounds, yeah, which is over here. Right, you can see Rust is complaining here. Right, in order to use the dash loudly function and have it implemented for your type, in this case, our cat struct, okay, it needs to also implement the action trait, yeah. You can see the error here, right. It says trait bound cat action, right, the action trait was not satisfied, yeah, because once again, we did not implement the or the action trait for our cat, yeah. So this is a very, very useful way and powerful way in Rust to conditionally implement functions for your types, yeah, using traits. All right, so let's undo that. Undo the commenting, yeah. And the error should go away. All right, so after going through the three examples we have here, what do you think about traits in Rust now? Will you use them more often? Are you looking forward to use them in your Rust projects? Okay, let us know in the comments below. Okay, and if you do enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you have not already done so. It will help out this channel a lot. And as always, stay awesome and stay safe. Cheers, man.